Hey, Mike Jackson here for Signcraft Magazine. Everything's online now at signcraft.com. Today I want to show you how to use the rectangle tool and the rounded rectangle tool in this short video. There's also going to be videos for the ellipse and circle and the polygon tool and the star tool. They work a little bit different, each one of them, but they also work much the same. They're all in the same little grouping in the toolbar. Okay, I'm here in Adobe Illustrator. My version is 2022. That's one of the Creative Cloud versions. Those get updated all the time with all kinds of new features. Now, I'm going to show you a little bit today about how to do the uh, rectangle tool. And before we get too far along on this, I have on the screen here, I have a, an artboard that's 8 inches by 8 inches. And I have guidelines locked down at 4 inches and 4 inches, as you can see here. Now, one of the things you might want to do on this kind of tutorial here is go under your window and turn on the control bar. That's this one. And then also go down and turn on your transform box and stroke and pathfinder. Those come in handy usually. And then, of course, you'll have some swatches if you want to change colors and that kind of thing. So that gets us kind of set up to start doing this. Now, the first thing you might notice is we would go over to the toolbar and the rectangle tool is available to us. The shortcut command for it is M, as you see right there. And so typically you just go out and drag a box and let go. And over in the transform, you can see the size of it is 4.75 by 2.7 roughly. I can delete it. Now I've got it set for um, a green fill with a fine black outline. It doesn't really matter for doing what we're doing here today, but those will work. And so the next thing you might notice is that you have a rectangle tool with a rounded corner. And again, if you look up here, you can see a few variables within this. So half inch radius and then also in this menu bar, in the control bar across the top, you'll see 0.5 up there. Now it has some options as far as what the corners look like and let's say square the corners or do the rounded inner rounded corners and so those are fairly easy to do if we wanted to control the specific corners uh, there's an option down here let's say I want to work on this corner I just go to the bottom left and I can change that to one of the other types and let's say we'll change this one to the the standard rounded one and I can do that by clicking on the type here and change that to rounded. So that's all fairly easy to do. If I have the rounded rectangle tool selected, I can just click and drag anywhere. And whatever I used last time is going to be set as the radius. And you can see that quarter inch radius. That's what I hit in last time. And it will stay that way until you reload the program again. And it will go back to defaults, which I think was half inch. And so any box that I make right now will have that and it's a matter of clicking and dragging. I can click from the bottom up or the top down. It doesn't really seem to matter. Now if I want to take a little bit of control over everything, I'll con control A and delete. I'll start over. Now I can do uh, one single click and you'll notice where I put the, put the cursor and if I click I can enter in a specific amount here and let's put in two inches by six inches and then I'm going to go ahead and leave it at a quarter inch radius and say OK. Now it sets the point based on where I originally clicked and it'll go down and to the right. If I want to have a little more control over where it goes again is I'll delete that one. This time if I hold this option key down or alt on windows and click right over my intersection there same information is in the box and all I have to do is click OK. Now I know I have a box that's centered directly over my guidelines. This will give you some kind of idea how uh, you know we take a little bit of numeric control over this uh, feature here. Let me talk a little bit about the difference between the regular rectangle tool and the rounded rectangle tool. Right now I have the regular one set and it pretty much works the same all things considered. Click up around up down whatever you want to do it's all visual at this point and you know everything looks probably like you expect it to look so I'll control a or command a and delete that now if I were to do what we did earlier and hold the option key down and I'm gonna put it right over the crosshair here you'll see that instead of having three boxes to enter into it I only have two boxes the width and the height and I can go ahead and put in six tab two and say okay now I don't have 
any way of rounding the corners, at least, um, you know, without doing a little extra work. And so you can do that. You can go up to the direct selection tool. And when you do that, that will give you some radius corners. And you still can enter in whatever amount you want to put in there. And so it really, it's kind of apples and oranges as to how you do it. It just depends on if you want to enter. I'll go ahead and go back to the rounded box here. If I want to enter the same thing all in one motion here, hit the option key, click on it. Now I can change it to 0.25 or change it to half inch and it'll look pretty much like the one below. And so it's just a matter of apples and oranges. Which way do you want to do it? I don't think it really matters that much. You know, you can still adjust the corners on this one the same way. You can slide it around with with same same method. This time I will go ahead and do the same thing we've been doing here as I shift and drag out and you'll see that I'm making a square this time. And what you'll see in the detail here is in the transform dialog box I'm going to say scale the corners. And so you have a general idea that this square has a proportion uh, radius on it. And if I were now to change it, I'll go back to the direct selection tool and I shift from the middle and option, I can square this in. And you can see that the little box looks basically the same. It just looks larger or smaller. Okay, if I, if I turn this off here and I start dragging in from the corner, you'll see that the, sh the panel actually changes quite a bit even all the way down to where it looks like a circle. And so that scale corners, you know, is something you've got to either watch for or count on, whichever way you want to look at it. And th this one works the same thing as if I have a, a fairly large uh, stroke on this particular object. Let's bring it up quite a bit. Okay, if I bring that stroke up now, and if I say scale the stroke with the effects, and I do the same thing, you can see, I'll select everything. You can see that it's going to scale the size of that outline and the color and the shape and all that. Now if I turn that off and say here and now I start dragging this in, I turn off the scale the stroke, you're going to see that proportionally that stroke gets really, really big. So again, those two tools can you know help you out if you're having trouble. Now you kind of have an idea where to look for the for the issues there. This last little section here in this video is dedicated mostly to the people that are using sign making equipment, vinyl cutters, plotters, routers, laser cutters, and plasma cutters, and so forth. And what we deal with in the sign industry versus printing is we deal with vector outlines. And so I want to give you a little bit of heads up on what's happening on the screen here, doing it what we've done so far. First thing is I'll make a new version of a rounded square. In this case I'm going to hold the option and shift key down and bring it up. Now if I apply a stroke to it here, that's this command, and say okay let's do black and it only applied a one point stroke on it so let me bring it up. Fairly substantial one so we can see it fairly well. Okay, to make this work, this would print fine on uh, you know thermal printers and all the laser printers and those kind of things, but it won't cut very well. It won't cut at all really. The only thing that will cut would be the the hot pink panel. So what we need to do is just go up under object and then say expand and this will create outlines at the edges of the stroke and then we will be able to plot that. Now what happens here are these two things are grouped together as it created this and so we'd have to go up under object and then say ungroup. Okay and to show you what's going on here I'll click off that and I'll just select just the outline you can see that I can set it off to the side and now we see that the original panel is still there and now we've got an outline that overlaps slightly I grabbed it in the middle here these two parts now we could use uh, you know vinyl cutters and overlay the two parts now the other option would be to do a stroke on this using uh, the pathfinder stroke and we'll delete this part and go back up and select the object again go to pathfinder object path offset path and this resembles the sign 
cutting software that we're all used to. And so in this case, I can put in a 0.2 inches and say OK. And then I can select the one that's in the back, which is this one, and tell it to be black. OK, so now we, what we have are, and I'll view this in wireframe mode, that would go Command Y. And essentially, we just have a panel and then a black outline panel around that. And I can show you that. I'll turn that back off. And if I select just the magenta part, I can drag it off to the side. And you can see that it will give us a black panel that we could cut, apply to the surface, and then cut this out as a separate panel, lay it right back over the top of it in the field or in the shop. And this is why we've been doing it for years. I'm showing you this example here, but just to remind you that all of these tools, the rectangle tool, rounded rectangle tool, ellipse and circle, polygon tool, and star tool, work basically the same way, or exactly the same way, in, uh, in the context of doing the outlines and expand strokes and you know using the pathfinder tool and actually offsetting the stroke to uh, create an extra new outline so you know it's not just the rectangle that we're dealing with here it, they all work the same way in that one group there well I think after you watch this video that you'll understand that uh, rectangle tool and the, the rounded rectangle tool they're more than just you know click and drag and let go and accept the results we do have a lot of control over those things and hopefully this uh, video will give you you know pretty good idea how to use them now Oh,